Hey BlenderBob here, a few weeks ago I complained on Twitter that Blender doesn't have set driven keys and somebody saw my tweet and wrote an add-on for set driven keys. What are set driven keys? Well, here we go. So I got two objects here, I got a sphere and I got an empty. The empty is going to be the driver, which means the one that will influence the other one. So I click on load driver and I will decide what will make the influence. In this case, I'm going to choose the location in Y. So that means that when I move this empty in Y, it's going to influence another object. That object will be my sphere. So this is going to be the driven. So just click on load driven. Okay, let me stretch that out so we can see what we're doing. All right. Okay, so now what we want to do is to set a key. We'll just use a default position for now. I'm just going to set a key here. Now I'm going to move this empty here. I'm going to move it to, uh, actually I can write it here. I'm going to move it to one. Okay, so when it's at one, I want this sphere to be, well, I will move it, I will scale it, I will rotate it. Now you see when I rotate it, it doesn't rotate from the right place. It doesn't rotate from the center, it does it from the origin. Uh, the problem is that uh, the set driven key is on, so you need to turn it off while you do these manipulations. So you just turn that off while you do it, then you can rotate it and place it, move it, scale it, whatever you want. Then you can turn it back on, but set your key before. So let me go back here. I will set all this stuff, rotate, scale, move, whatever I want. I will set my key. After this, I can turn it back on. So now you see, if I move my empty, I just animated the sphere. Actually, I've driven the sphere from the empty. Another very cool feature that you have on this add-on is the ability to see and modify your keyframes. Well, they're not really keyframes, but you know what I mean. So the way to do it is to here expand this and go into keyframes here. So I can go to 0 0.5 and 1 here. So if I want to change this one, it's like, I don't want it to 0.5 anymore. So I will change it to 0 0.25. Okay, so now I just moved that driven key. Actually, what this add-on does is just create a bunch of action constraints and package them together in a nice user-friendly user interface. Here's an example on how you could use the set driven keys. So in this case, I got this, uh, this model here and I want to explode it. So I just control it with the empty here. The empty controls the entire animation. You can see there's no animation here. It's only the empty that drives it. But if I animate the empty, then I can control my animation. So let's set this to zero and I will add a keyframe, a real keyframe this time. And then I will move on my time slider to let's say uh, frame 30 and put this to one, which is the end of all my animation here. Set a key here. So now I do have an animation in the timeline and makes it very easy to change the animation. If I want to put it to uh, 55 instead, then I can just slow down my animation this way and I don't have to redo, modify a lot of keyframes because I just need to modify one object. Okay, here's another one. This one is in Maya. I wish I could show you this rig in Blender, but I don't have it. It's an old rig that I had a long time ago, but you can see all the controllers for the face they're all set driven keys. This is how it works. So you can control a lot of different things. Sometimes it's bones, sometimes it's, uh, it's key shapes. Everything is set driven key in this interface here. You may experience some problems sometimes with rotations because they're a little bit tricky. In this case, I have a, a cube that's parented to another cube. So I will set this one as a driver and set the other one as a driven here and I'm going to use the rotation in Y. So I will take this one here, just set a keyframe. I will turn this off and set a keyframe. I'll move it. And when I'm at this position, I want this arm here to go all the way to the red line here. Let's just adjust it like this. All right. I'm going to set a keyframe. Okay. Let's add another one. So I'll rotate this a little bit. Then I'll take the arm and again, align it with the red line. Okay. So keyframe. Now I can turn back on the modifier. So when I rotate this, you can see that it follows a red line, but it's not perfectly tight. Sometimes you have little bumps. You can see it doesn't follow perfectly, but it's okay. You have to live with it. Another issue you can have is when you pass the 180 degrees here, you can see it just pops. Now, this is not a problem with the add-on itself. It's a problem with the modifier, the way it reacts to rotations. I have to admit that the Maya version of Cedrin Key is more powerful because you can drive anything, not just translation, rotation, and scale. You can drive 
anything that is keyframable in Maya. For example, you could have the rotation of a sphere that will change the color of a shader or the intensity of a displacement map. Let, let me give you an example. You have a character that when he flexes his muscle, you want the veins to pop out. So you could make a driven key that says, well, like this, the displacement map, map is at zero. But when the arm is like this, then the vein will pop out because you crank up the displacement value. So you get it or the normal value, whatever. Or another example, you have an arm and uh, when it bends, you have interpenetration between the cloth and the, the geometry under it. So you could create a shape key that would be driven by the bone, by the rotation of the bone. So when it's like this, it's, it's at zero. And when it's like this, then you crank up the value of the, uh, of the shape key and it will correct the, the interpenetration. Well, in my case, it's okay because I don't use set-driven key to drive the color of a shader or the intensity of a particle emitter or stuff like this. I usually uh, use it just for uh, move, scale, rotate on objects. And that is exactly what this tool does. And the interface is actually better in Blender. The, what the guy did is uh, so much better because you have this little list of all the keyframes so you can jump directly to different keyframes. In Maya, you can only go to previous or before. And it's a bit annoying because you don't even know where it is in time. But this one gives you all the information that you need. So I much rather use the uh, add-on Blender than the one in Maya. So set-driven key. Yeah, of course, you could use an action constraint to do the same thing. That's what the add-on does. But it's not easy to use. It's not user-friendly. This is just a really clean, nice user interface. Use it. Try it. You will see. You will love it. It's worth all the money the guy is charging for. He worked hard on it. And he deserves the money. So... Uh, please encourage him and the tool is awesome and I can guarantee you once you start using it you won't want to do stuff manually anymore because it's awesome. All right, happy 2025 new year.